Okay, so this is Sacagawea, Sacagawea. I've heard it both ways. Nonetheless, she is a really important figure in U.S. history and is absolutely paramount to the Lewis and Clark expedition. There's not a great deal known about her early life. What we do know is she's part of the Shoshone Native American tribe, but at a very young age, she's actually captured by some Hidatsa natives. From there, she's forced to marry a man by the name of Toussaint Charbonneau, who has another wife that's also of Shoshone background, probably also a captured Shoshone. It's from here that she's in the Fort Mandan area in 1804, where Lewis and Clark are at the time of their expedition. Just some background on Lewis and Clark, they are commissioned by Thomas Jefferson to go venture out west. Thomas Jefferson actually thought there was woolly mammoths out west. People just had no idea. She's going to be there with Toussaint Charbonneau and their infant son, Jean Baptiste. She's actually going to carry her son around on basically like a backpack during most of the expedition, which is impressive enough. But she's also going to be very huge as a guide, interpreter, trading stuff. Right away, uh, she's going to go and find food all this good stuff. The reason that Toussaint Charbonneau, by the way, is also in the area is Lewis and Clark are trying to find people to help out. They see that he's this French fur trader. The writings of Lewis and Clark make mention that he's got a native wife. Uh, it's not going to be mentioned by name about Sacagawea until a little bit later, though she does have mad respect by the party during pretty much most of the trip. Her and a slave by the name of York are going to vote it's really one of the first times in U.S. history where you'll have an African-American and a native voting, and this is when they get all the way to the West Coast. The vote is on what they should do next. She is also going to be imperative in saving the diaries of Lewis and Clark. One of the canoes overturns. She will jump in the water, saving all of the works that had been written on. There's also a time in the expedition that she's going to trade a beaded necklace for some horses. Even though only one person dies on the Lewis and Clark expedition, she's going to be instrumental in making sure that they're fed. Again, they have the horses. She's going to run into her long lost brother. Remember that she was captured at a young age. This is during a time where they thought there was pretty hostile relations between Lewis and Clark and then some natives in the area. As it turns out, Sacagawea knows this person, again, being her brother. So there's a little bit of a celebration. When the expedition goes back, there's a couple different theories as to what happens to Sacagawea. Her son, Jean Baptiste, does go to school in St. Louis. I can't remember if it's Lewis or Clark. I believe it's Lewis that will actually help raise uh, the son. Sacagawea some people claim that she dies from an illness at about 25. Some people claim that she goes back and lives with her native tribe. Nonetheless, look into her because she's got a fascinating story. There's a bunch of good videos on YouTube about her. I'm running out of time though, per always. Love you all.